What's up guys? Welcome back to Static Works. Today we're going to be preparing the G35 for some power and we'll show you guys what we have for it really soon. But right now we just have to move my car because if you guys watched the last video, we were sanding it and getting it ready for priming. But we don't have a shop right now because my uncle's not feeling so well, so we can't prime it there. So we just have to wait. But this is how the car looks now and it looks really nice because we actually sanded down the Bondo and get, got it all ready. And it looks a lot better than how it did. I mean, every everything's pretty much ready except for this little portion, but that's where the bumper's gonna go on. So I don't even know if I wanna touch that spot. But we still have to get scotch pads for the door jams and under the trunk, those areas, we're just gonna be scuffing it lightly. We're not really gonna be primering that part. We're just gonna be spraying it when we spray the car with um, with the special color that I'm not gonna say. Orange. It's like a bright neon orange. Such a, can't say that word. Go bring your car in, fool. All right, move this car. No, you move it, I wanna see you move it. Here, let me see your keys. You know how to drive manual? What's that? I read it once online. Oh. What's this, Devin? Oh, you just want me to see it cause it's dirty, you bastard. No, fool, I sound it. My car is broken in now. I know. Still runs. It looks so bad right now. Hey, but it's gonna look really good once we're done. Don't drive it because everything in there will fly off. Now, I just gotta get this baby girl. It looks just as broken as mine, sadly. This car grabs immediately, which is really fucking good. Martin, I have a question for you, Martin. Yes, it's slow. No, I have, I have a question. I feel like we both, we both need some realization right now. Come here. The project cars are junk. So how, how did it go when we first started this channel to really nice cars? And these? very clean to these pieces of shit. Tell me, how, did, how does that shit work? We started from the bottom. So now we're starting from the bottom. Instead of starting from up here and moving up a little bit, we're gonna start from down here and move up. Suck like that. A good, that's a good analogy, I mean. Think about it. So what did we get? Electric fuel pump only. Used for gasoline fuel injection systems. Or E85. So the fuel pump that Marin did get was a Warboro, 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 485 fuel pump which can handle up to 600 wheel horsepower no. on 85 yes Let's see i fucking 850 wheel horsepower on gas and who 600. is that whoa whoa so 850 on gas or 600 wheel horsepower on e85 i'm never gonna get there another thing that we're doing to it if you guys haven't seen our other videos of us discussing we did get some GTR injectors from my uncle who works at RD Engineering and they tune GTRs are pretty much all they do in rebuild motors so we got those and that's gonna allow us to push some extra fuel to get some extra power um, we're not gonna be installing those today we'll probably make this like a part one and part two video so we get you gotta you guys gotta stay tuned for the next one Fenders to disconnect the battery. I know we're not gonna be turning on the ignition to prime the fuel or anything, but you always gotta be safe. We do have to check off the next, next thing on the list. As you can see, we did sand it. And the next thing is to paint and slam it. And 15K up, so you guys better subscribe. But Martin is going to be going E85 soon. We do have the gauge installed. We obviously do need to get one more, but we do have that. Stephanie has tires. We do need to get her brakes, wrap, all that stuff is gonna come later. And then Eden, Eden, you have you have fucking big goals right here, bro. Luckily, Martin does have the car gutted, so it's gonna be really, really easy to get to it. There's two sides to the gas tank. The red one is the one that we need to take off the fuel pump, and these just look like Phillips that you're gonna wanna Phillips or a flathead that you can get through here and then you're just gonna 
turn it to unlock it and take it off. So that should be really easy to do. Should pop off. Oh, it's dirty. Now, kinds of dirty. It does. It does look dirty. Now you just pry this off and then. So since we're here, I am gonna clean a little bit of this up so it's not as bad. And there are, um, since my gauge is kind of bad, the the level, there are little uh, floats in here. This one and this side. So we're just gonna clean both after we. Hopefully, hopefully it. it'll work, and we'll show you guys how they look and what to do if you're having that issue because there it might be multiple things. Yes, like um, a bad car overall. Damn. Pancake's getting fat. He's a little bigger. If you guys didn't watch Martin's, what video was it? The radiator? I think so, yeah, yeah. Um, Daniel did get me a bunny. His name is Pancake. We actually made an Instagram for him, so make sure you give him a follow. Static Pancake. And the foot's got big. Like, if you see the other video, the foot's tiny. I know. But he shouldn't get that big. Before we disconnect this hose because fuel is going to shoot out, we're going to be removing the the screws, which are just Phillips, and there is six of them, and hopefully they don't, they don't fall. So the whole whole thing comes up. So the whole thing's connected. Yeah, that's insane. There's a sensor right here with two wires going to it. The whole flow is part of the the fuel pump and everything. Like the whole assembly is just one piece. That's crazy. But we're gonna pass out, bro. All right, start disconnecting all the wires. Sometimes what happens is this flow right here, the gasoline starts eating away at the plastic and there's small holes that start to form and the gasoline starts weighing it down. And that's one reason why they do go bad and they have false readings, but I don't think there's any, any holes. Yeah, there's nothing in there, so that's a really good sign. This is the whole assembly. That's insane that there's literally wires there's wires inside. That's trust me. Out. Normally they sh they're shield. I know these are shielded, but you would think that gasoline would start eating it. And right now he he's probably trying to get to the fuel pump, which is right here. Yeah. So you're gonna have to disconnect that with just a flathead and then pull it out. There's one tab. Okay, so there's just one tab that releases it. Yeah, it looks like it. And then that's the filter, huh? This is the stock fuel pump. Looks really nice. Um, you should be able to just pop it out of there. Let me show Stephanie how the fuel gauge works. So pretty much there's this little lever and there's air inside here. Okay. Okay. And then once the gas fills up, it starts going up. And this, I believe it's all resistance. So there's electricity flowing through here. And the higher this goes up, it like sends different voltages. You still with me? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. It sends it sends different voltages to the fuel gauge to give it different readings. I believe. Oh, from, I see. Makes sense though. So all it is, it's kind of like it's hard to explain, but pretty much it's just gonna change it's the amount of electricity. Like, yeah. So pretty much it's like say say for example say 12 volts is full and zero volts is empty. Yeah. So this is gonna check. God damn birds. God it's damn it. It's really just to measure how much gas you have. Yeah, so what happens is since there's just air in here, gasoline, <laughs> those birds are definitely fucking. Well, give us some privacy, god damn. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Anyways, this little plastic piece begins to corrode and the gasoline starts eating it away. And then this gets filled with gasoline, so it weighs it down. So mm. it's not able to change, do you know what I'm saying? Oh. So that's one of the reasons it goes bad. Um, another reason, I guess, for these cars is the contacts right here go bad, so they just clean it. Because this is, yeah, this is measuring resistance. To give you guys a better understanding of what I'm talking about, this is the amount of resistance it has right now when it's on empty. But when you start lifting this up, you can see that it starts to change. So that's pretty much how a potentiometer works. And I just wanted to pull this out just to show you guys because it's pretty crazy how it's pretty crazy how things work. You learned you learned something new. How do you feel? There's so many smarts. So Martin didn't look at the extra shit he had and it comes with a new filter. So it looks a lot different. 
And with this one, you just gotta, you just gotta push it in there and now it's in. And when it comes to these, you are going to have to hardwire it, I believe. So these connect together. So you just have to plug it in. You're gonna have to connect these wires to the existing wires that plug in. This right here is going to be, have to be cut and obviously black is ground, the brown is power. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be splicing them together. Now that the whole assembly is together, we kind of ghetto rigged it when it came to the wires just because when you're pulling in the fuel pump, this big ass connector doesn't wanna fit through so we just cut it and then just put connectors on it. We're gonna be cleaning the contacts even though I'm pretty sure it works just because we've seen it. But just to show you guys, this is how you would clean it. You, you have to be very, very gentle because you don't want to fuck it up. But if there's any dirt in between. Like that? Yeah. Like that. It may cause some some problems with it. But it doesn't look too dirty. So you should be good. Oh, fuck. Birthday boy right here. Oh, steady getting. Hey, birthday, bro. Thanks, bro. I don't know you're recording today. Yeah, fool. We're doing, um, we're doing like this, this fucking fuel pump that's like up to a thousand horsepower or something. Like, even though he's only like gonna that. push 220 to the wheels. <laughs> Bro, you gotta be, are you gonna be like that for? He's, he's gonna like, beat your ass off, folks. He's, he's, like your he's coming out. That was mad. Even if it's your birthday, I will hurt you. <laughs> We've been running into an issue. When we try putting it back in, it's not, I guess it's not short enough to fit in there. And we're looking at the other, the other fuel pump and they look identical. The only thing wrong is the actual line that feeds the fuel. And as you can see right here, this one, this one is shorter and same size, but this thing sticks out a lot more. So what we have to do is cut the bottom of where the fuel pump sits, the casing, and see if it just slides in more. So if it does, then it'll be good. If not, we might have to cut the extension on the fuel pump, the new fuel pump. But I've hardly seen people run this fuel pump online that I've been trying to lug. Normally they just run a 455, which is smaller. So that's probably why we're, we're running into issues. Maybe we're not installing it right, but we didn't really look at an installation guide. We just, we just full sent for the boys, eh? So it finally did fit after we cut it. Um, hopefully the pump is good. It should. It should work, bro. So that's pretty much all you have to do to get it to fit in there, right? Yeah. Before we put the main cap on, just connect the sensor and then we'll turn it on. We didn't take out the fuse and let it die out. Now that the battery's connected, we are going to be priming it to let it build up, even though we didn't pull the fucking fuse. Still gotta prime it. Yeah. I don't hear it priming no more, so I think we're good luck. Like, you'll hear it. Ready? Here we go. Hopefully it doesn't Boom. throw a Just kidding. Hopefully it doesn't throw a code. Turn on good. Yeah. Now we're gonna go drive it just to make sure everything's fine. I know. Do a couple falls. Drive normal with a couple Sounds really nice. Damn, son. <laughs> Sounds exactly like a fucking VQ. <laughs> to get more fuel out of this because you still do need the tune yeah a lot of people think they can just do all these mods without a no, tune it needs the, a tune to run the good tune the tune will will dictate how much fuel you're going to be pushing out yeah so it's probably pushing the same amount of it fuel is, as yeah, you are before because of the ECU to. adjust to it so don't expect Anything. more power yeah just these are all just mods to allow for more power once you tune it yeah Third gear. That's scary. So what do you think, Martin? Was that a success? 
mean, besides us taking forever, it's not too bad. Honestly, the smallest things take us forever. Like, it's like even if it's so it, simple, it still takes. It us is forever. modifying because like he's he's in a whole new realm now, of pushing more power or trying to. So, so you you have to like start modifying things, trying to make it work. Even though it's ghetto, it's gonna work. No, it works. It, it's fine. <laughs> it, there's, it's not starting for fuel. It's in the high RPMs, still pulling like how it should. It's just gasoline, dude. We should wear masks because that shit's just like in my fucking nostrils. So I'm probably gonna get some like, what is it, Mucinex? <laughs> Shut up, fool. Shut up, fool. You do not want to see what's behind this. That's from earlier. Does that hurt? <laughs> yeah. I know it hurt my hand. This is part one of the E85 build. We still need part two, which is going to be the fuel injectors. But we're getting really ready. Really. Really ready. Really, really ready. ready. Really ready. We're getting ready for a tune. We just need test pipes, fuel injectors, and a bigger intake. And then we're good to go for more power. So. We're gonna get those shortly and we do have the test pipes. You've seen them, so we're gonna be installing those. It's gonna be pretty dope, but that's for another video because that's just gonna take us all day. But on that note, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next one.